everybody. Welcome back to the first TechSoup Connect Australia presentation of 2023. I'm your host, Kat Milner, the Chief Tech Ninja for Create Your Change. And it is my pleasure to welcome to present today, Carolyn Handley. So Carolyn is the creator of the holistic coaching program, Shy to Shining, Become the Star of Your Own Life. It is a holistic approach, head meaning empowering thinking, heart to creating calm, self-compassion, and overcoming self social anxiety, and voice, making connections with others, getting clear on your own thoughts and ideas, and really learning how to speak up. Carolyn founded My Joyful Life to share the strategies and insights that she has learned over her decades of studying personal growth from psychology to mindfulness, spirituality to life coaching. Her clients describe her coaching as empowering and life-changing and especially appreciate Carolyn's practical strategies, her warm, lovely empathy, and her gentle yet challenging approach. It is my absolute pleasure to now hand it over to my friend and colleague, Carolyn Henley. Thank you so much, Kat. It's such a delight to be here. And uh, thank you and welcome to everyone who's watching live and all those who are watching the replay. It's uh, wonderful to see you. Thank you for um, giving your time for this. I hope that this is going to really um, create some strategies and some ideas that really helps you in overcoming overwhelm. So as we get started, I'd just like to ask you, why are you here? What are you hoping for? Um, do, you over, do you get overwhelmed? Of course you must, otherwise you wouldn't be here because the heading is overwhelmed to organized. Um, so for each of us, overwhelm, oh, because I'm hosting <laughs> or because your code's hosting. I think all, even if we're hosting, I think uh, all of us sometimes get overwhelmed and knowing what to do and how to deal with it is uh, really, really important because you can just waste um, energy, time, your mood, the whole thing can plummet uh, when you're overwhelmed and you don't know how to deal with it. So hopefully today gives you the toolbox that you need. Um, so I was saying, why are you here? And what does overwhelm look like for you? Yeah, funny ways to become more effective and deal with stuff. Yes, yes. Something about caring for yourself when you're in the middle of the overwhelm is really important. Too many things, not knowing where to start. Yes, Melody, that's uh, so common. We, as women, we juggle so many things, the family, the work, the, the, the hobbies, the trying to stay healthy and household and so many things. And not knowing where to start, we'll talk specifically about that today. So stay tuned. Um, so thinking about what overwhelm looks like for you now. Now imagine a day with no overwhelm. Imagine I imagine I've got my I've got my magic wand here. I actually have a magic ruler. I wave it, and you have a day, and it has no overwhelm at all. Imagine what that would be like. Just try and picture it. Just we're literally going to literally do this for cut just a couple of seconds. What would it be like to be not overwhelmed for the whole day? Can you picture it? I hope so. So hold on to that picture. Oh, one more question. How motivated are you to do something about overwhelm, to go from the overwhelm to the picture of whatever you're, you're picturing? Maybe you give yourself a score out of 10, like naught is like, I'm just not going to do anything. And 10 is, I, I, I am doing everything I can want to get over this overwhelm. So would your score be out of 10? If you're willing to share it in the chat box, that would be great. Ooh, we've got an 8, we've got a 9. Okay, so we're, we're pretty motivated. That's fantastic. You're in the right place. Excellent. Uh, let me just share a couple of slides and this first one, I think. Okay, is that showing my slide? Excellent. Um, okay, so this uh, webinar is for you today. If you are juggling and exhausted, and we already mentioned that, um, you work hard, but you don't seem to get anywhere ahead. Uh, you're stressing out and you, stre you use stress to motivate yourself. Some of us teach us, treat ourselves really harshly. Um, and say all sorts of things to ourselves to get ourselves moving that we would never, ever say to our friend. Um, maybe you're already overwhelmed and it's only halfway through January. That's, that's not good. <laughs> Let's sort that out now. Um, maybe you'd like to make 2023 your most effective year yet. Um, and maybe you'd like to look back in a year and really be proud that this year was the year that you actually got, got unstuck and moving on something, whatever area of life that's important to you. So, um, uh -huh. So this workshop will equip you with tools so you can prioritize, you can stay focused, and you can achieve 
ultimately achieve your goals. So as uh, Kat mentioned um, a bit about me, but I just wanted to share that I actually grew up as an anxious, shy, stressed, and often overwhelmed child and teenager, very self-conscious teenager. And I was often struggling with how do I, what do I do? How do I do it? How do I, how does everyone else seem to know what's happening in the world? And I really didn't quite understand what to do or how to do it myself, how to navigate um, socially, especially myself. Um, so and that, that actually led to a passion for my whole life of studying psychology, self-help books, spirituality, theology, all sorts of things to try and understand what would make my life better and what would help me to live a life that's not stressed, not heavy like a blanket, uh, not overwhelming, but actually joyful and peaceful. And how can I be confident like those other people over there that seem to know what to do? Um, so I became, then I, having discovered a lot of strategies about this, then I became really passionate about sharing that with other people. And that's why I'm here today. Um, I'm a transformational coach, spiritual director and retreat leader. And I'm really passionate about seeing people flourish, um, treating yourself with kindness and respect and having an empowering toolkit. So you actually know how to do, how to face life. Um, and yes, I've got two programs. The one Kat mentioned, Shy to Shining. And also another one, Love Yourself, Love Your Life, uh, about overcoming stress and negative self-concept. And that's the one that um, Overwhelmed to Organised fits into. So insight number one, you can't plan and execute at the same time. So I'm just going to unshare my, oops, unshare my screen. Um, you can't, what do I mean by that? If you try and plan something and do it at the same time, your brain actually gets a bit frazzled because you're trying to, you're trying to get the plan happening. You're trying to do the strategy, work out the strategy, but you're also trying to get it happening. And we do that a lot. That's one of the ways that we overwhelm ourselves is to try and do it all at once. Oh, I've just got to get this thing happening. So you just start doing it. Um, so one thing that's important is to separate, and that's what we're about to do now, separate, let's make the strategy or the plan, and then let's work out the steps, and then let's actually do them. Once you've worked out the strategy, doing the steps is actually not too hard. Doing the, creating the plan might be a, need a bit of thinking at the beginning, but if we're not trying to do anything, if we're just trying to say, okay, how do, where, what's my goal and how do we get there? That simplifies it so much. So let's start. Uh, step number one um, is what I call a brain dump. I just invite you to have a, get grab your pen and paper, or you might want to grab a um, Word document or a note document in your computer. And I just invite you to just spend one or two minutes just writing down everything in your brain. The, bra the idea of the brain dump is when you feel overwhelmed, your brain is just whirring with so many things. Oh, I, need to, I need to make dinner tonight. I need to pop out and pick up the dry cleaning. I need to um, pick up someone from school. Oh, but I haven't paid this bill. Oh, but I need to get something done for an email for something that needs to be done by tomorrow. And, and your brain is just all these things that cluttering your brain if you just put them down on paper or put, I actually use a thing called uh, one note and I type everything into one note in, in a, a whole um, file that this is called brain dump and if I chuck everything there then I know that I won't forget something I won't lose it um and once I put it written it down then you can actually start looking at it and going well well what have I got here and what do I need to do welcome Nicole lovely to see you we're just doing so step one of the Overwhelmed to Organised uh, workshop. And step one is to actually do a brain dump and think, I'm feeling overwhelmed. I've got all these thoughts in my head. Let's write them all down. So I just invite you to grab a pen and paper. We'll just take one more minute. Just write down whatever you can think of, what, whatever's coming to you that's, that's overwhelming your head. See if you can just write a few more things down. Or if you've actually already got the list, you've got everything down that's whirring around in your head, and start reading through it. What have you got there? What's the most important thing? So if you, I don't know if you're um, familiar with um, Zoom, but down the bottom there's a thing called reactions. Can you just give me a thumbs up if you've written down a decent amount of, uh, list of a decent amount of things for your brain dump? Yes. Yes. Yes, great. Okay, let's keep going. So insight number two for, for you today is, the Pareto principle. You've all done it, fantastic. 
Uh, the Pareto principle is the 80-20 rule. Now, we've probably all heard about this, but what this means, research has found that 80% of the results come from 20% of the effort. That's incredible. So if we just can work out what 20% to do and let go of the rest or hold it lightly, um, we might actually be able to get through this thing that we're overwhelmed about, whatever that looks like. So the... Um, the important thing is to say, what is the most important thing? What is that 20% that's going to make 80% of the work, of the different difference? So just a quick share, I'm a recovering perfectionist. Um, in my corporate days, I used to have to do all these reports and project plans, and things like that. And when I was writing a report, I would actually agonize over it for hours and hours. I'd dot, dot the I's across the T's and I'd try and make sure it was perfect because I didn't want anyone to criticize. I didn't want to get laughed at. I had all these um, negative thoughts, which is you know, why I never a coach to help people with that. Um, but I used to spend hours and hours. And then I realized once I've learned the 80-20 principle, that the 80% of the time I was trying to fix things up that weren't really going to be a problem for anyone. The 20% was getting the report done, getting the essence, getting the, the main chunks of information and getting the information accurate. How I exactly wrote it um, and tweaked the, the, the grammar and the spelling and the, all the things um, is nice. But it wasn't, that's the 80% that really didn't make as much difference. So I invite you to come back to your list. Have a look at your list. And the step two is to prioritize. What is most important for you on that list? It might even be what's the most important thing today. Now there's, there's important and there's urgent. And they are actually different things. The urgent thing might be turn off the, the pot on the stove because it will boil over or ruin the dinner. Uh, but important is the things that are actually going to make that 80% of the difference. So look at the list. Out of all the zillions of things on your list, what are the, what are the, are there really important two or three? Um, I really like my trusty yellow highlighter, but you might just want to, if you haven't got it highlighted, you could just use a different color pen or just an asterisk or something. But have a look through your list and mark the, if possible, the top one or maybe two or three items that are most important on your list. The thing that you think, gosh, if I do this thing, that will actually make all the difference. You now, while you're doing that, um, thinking about a not-for-profit, if you're thinking about a work thing and you work for a not-for-profit organization, your organization is likely to support a particular cause. Um, what does your organization aim to achieve for your cause? And then which of the things that you're doing in your work is most going to do make a difference for that cause or for the organization's support of that cause? That might be one way to actually ask yourself. Huh. Another thing would be, uh, if you're spending time delete, reading and deleting 50 emails, is that really going to help the cause that you're working on or your family or your, whatever the project is that you're aiming for? Or not? Uh, Will commenting on 20 social media posts, scrolling social media, is that really going to make a difference or not? So I just encourage you, we probably have a lot more time than we think because we spend time on those sorts of things. So has everyone, can you just give me a thumbs up? Have you worked out what your most important task is? There's one there somewhere. Have a look through. What is most, seems the most important to you? Brilliant. Now, step three, once you've worked out what the most important task is, is to actually break this really top priority task down into the smallest little steps that you can imagine. You break it down into what is the next step? And then if that looks scary, like what is the next step? I like to say to my coaching clients, break it down into such tiny steps that they're so small that they're not scary anymore. How does that sound? So try and, so this is where we actually start creating the plan or the strategy. So pull out that one priority and just write down maybe what are the next two, three, four steps that you could take. Things that would be really easy to do. If it's too big, break it down again. Once you've got a couple of steps written down, give me a thumbs up if you've got any questions. Write your questions in the chat. All right. So the next insight is that it's actually your beliefs about what you're doing Oh, do you have the step written down? To Nicole, are you asking, do you need to share it? Or are you asking, do you want me to share something? Do you have the step written down to share? 
I was just asking if you have the steps. I, I, I kind of all the all the steps one two three that we're up to. Yeah. I have them all on separate PowerPoints. That would have been really good to put it all in PowerPoint, wouldn't it? So step one was the brain dump. Brain dump. Step That's two it. is prioritize, which is most important. Okay. And step three, which we've just done, is make a plan. Or what are the smallest steps? Or break down to smaller steps. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for asking. You're welcome. So step four is, is the step is, is actually what belief is making you feel overwhelmed. When you feel all that overwhelming feeling, what are you actually thinking? Or maybe what are you saying to yourself? Do you know that actually our beliefs make a huge amount of difference in everything that we experience in our day? And very often the beliefs that we have are things that we pass, got passed down from our families, from our society, from our teachers. And we don't even know half of the beliefs that we have consciously. Um, and that's actually the fun, fun of, for me of being a coach is to help people uh, to identify what is the actual thing that they're struggling with and what's the, the thinking that is actually causing them um, that they may not even be aware of. Um, in fact, I was just thinking about it this afternoon as I prepared for this webinar. I can't think of a single coaching session with a client and I've been a coach for six years. I can't think of a single session which didn't include helping the, the client to challenge some sort of belief, some sort of thought about life, about themselves, about how far something is. It's so fundamental to how we, how we experience life and it's so fundamental to making a shift and making a change. So the question is, what are you believing that makes you feel overwhelmed? That's not an easy question. It might be things like, the, oh, my, my favourite, my favourite one, my least favourite, my most common one for myself is I'm not good enough. I, I, I still struggle with that one, but I'm, you know, I've said that to my whole life. You know, somehow everyone else seems to know what to do, but I, I, somehow I'm not good enough. Uh, I don't have time. I've got too much work. Too, I've, there's too many things to juggle. I can't fit it all in. Those are the sort of beliefs that might be behind your overwhelm. So are you able to identify a belief for yourself or a thought? If you need help with this, let me know because that's uh, this is that's this is the trickiest. Well, this this is the fourth step. Um, yeah, step four, this step, and the next step are trickier. That's, uh, so we can spend a few minutes working on it together if you need the, the help. I can't say no. Yes. <laughs> what is that little word? That little word no. We can't say no. I'm I just, with that too. I just have a kind heart. I just. I mean, personally and, and professionally, yes. I just can't seem to say, no, no. I don't have the time. I yes. have seven children. I come home, deal with them. I go to work, got to do with work, you know? And, yeah. and, but then in between all that, people are calling me, yeah. you know, and I can't seem to say no. And they feel that kind heart and that's why they're calling. Yeah. And that's why they're asking. I, I love that you have a kind heart, Nicole. That is beautiful. It's your gift. And for everyone else, it's a gift. But sometimes for you, I can feel that that's not a gift. That's actually a, cha a real challenge. Because being yeah. kind hearted, the, the flip side of that is if you're not saying no, then you're giving, giving, giving to other people all the time. And when do, when do you actually stop and recede for yourself? Yes. And when do you have time to care for yourself? Yes. And I am starting to, to notice that. Right. That um, is, hold on to that noticing. Yeah. That I'm is really starting important. to notice that. I am starting to say no here and there. Great. Uh, That's uh, fantastic. Kind of feels weird, but. <laughs> yes. And then I feel bad. Oh, no. It has to be done. It, it does have to be done. Do you know that? I, a lot of women I coach, they are just like you. They're giving, giving, giving the whole time. And the thing is, if you, I think each of us has a cup. And if we're giving the whole time, but we don't fill our own cup, then eventually we don't have as much to give. It's in our nature too. We're mothers. We're mothers, and we—that's that's a very giving, such a giving role. Always the yeah. children comfort. You know, when you think, "What do you want?" I, I, I ask in some of my coaching, "What do you want to do?" or something like that, and people go, "Oh, me." 
I mean, I had that too. Like you think about what, what do your children want? What do your husband want? What do you, all the things, all the people want? And then last of all, it's what do I want? Oh, oh, do I actually get to, to choose? <laughs> yeah. Right, right. I, yeah, it's, and then when you finally get to choose. Yes. My, my, I, I don't know what I want. No, how can you? You're out of practice. It's, yeah, literally, right. it's literally that you're out of practice. Right. You, you might need to choose really little things. Start with something simple. Yeah. I can't say, I, I can say, I can say no. And instead I'm going to choose, you know, to whatever it is, uh, go for a little walk at lunchtime to just lift my body a little bit or um, whatever it is. Put something yeah. in the dinner, some specific green vegetable in the dinner that I know that I really need for my health, even though the children may not exactly like it. Well, they don't have to have it. I'm going to have yeah. it. And it. Any, yeah. any, 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 start with a little thing like that and just practice. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you for sharing your, um, Nicole, your, I can't say no, that's really powerful. I think we can all agree with that. Um, so the next step, so, the, so that step was what belief or thinking is making you feel overwhelmed. And then the next step is, so what step, what belief could you have, which would change, undermine that? What belief, what's something that you could believe to negate that or to, to, to give you the power to say no, to give you the power to change that belief. So let me give you an example. Um, I had a client, uh, a couple of years ago. And she, look, she was juggling so much. She was working. She had a toddler, a little girl. Uh, she had a, a aging parents and a very sick father. And she was really worried about her father. And she was in a different state and that was locked down. So she couldn't even get there. Like it was really hard. Um, anyway, so she found herself snapping at the toddler. And we explored the whole thing. And what she was holding on to was this belief of, I have to do everything. I have to do it all myself. But as we explored... Um, we realized that she was actually not telling her toddler. There was a communication thing. She was assuming that the toddler was too young to understand what was happening. How can she share that her father is really ill? She's so worried. The whole COVID thing was, it's so complicated. So instead we explored, well, what would, what would actually help? And we explored the fact that the, the toddler is actually hearing the mother getting, getting snarky and, and angry and upset. And of course the little girl is thinking that it's her fault because that's how children think. If the mother's upset, they, they internalize it and they think it's all their fault. And so she, her behavior had been absolutely dreadful, really, really dreadful because she was feeling like it was all her fault, but she couldn't work out what was going wrong or what she'd done wrong. So the simple solution was just to, to change the belief from I have to hold it all by myself to actually saying, sometimes I can share clearly and honestly with my toddler. So this woman went to her toddler and she said, look, darling, Mummy's mommy sounding upset at the moment, but you know, my dad is really sick and I'm really worried about him. And sometimes that makes me upset. And when I'm upset and worried about my dad, then sometimes I, I shout or sometimes I say really rude things. And I'm so sorry. I'm, it's not about you. You are such a beautiful little girl, but I'm just upset because of my dad and being, him being sick. Well, the little girl gave her a big hug, which is what she needed, actually. Um, how beautiful to, to receive that. And her behavior problems all disappeared overnight because she understood if the mother was upset, she'd give her a hug rather than start behaving, mis you know, in uh, attention seeking ways. It transformed everything. And it all came down to how she was trying to hold everything and juggle everything and do it all herself rather than actually realizing that there was just a simple little communication, age appropriate, that she could do to turn the whole thing around. So back to you. So you've got your statement, what the belief that's making you feel overwhelmed. Um, it might be, I can't say no, it might be uh, whatever it is. What are you going to do to flip that, to actually make it, um, to, to tell it, teach yourself something different? A belief that actually makes you feel happier, calmer, more confident. It might be the opposite, but it might not be. It's usually not the, exactly the opposite. So if, say the belief was, I don't have time. And you say to yourself, I do have time for everything I need to do. Well, that doesn't feel true. If you don't believe it, that's not the right statement. Often it's sort of like you come at a sneaky angle rather than going directly at something. Uh, so instead of saying, I don't have time, you could say, I always make time for what's most important. That's a, that's a way to think, well, yep, that's important. So I'm going to make time for that. Of course, there's all these other things that didn't get done. 
but that's okay because I always make time for what's most important. So while you're thinking about that, I've got uh, one more client story and uh, let's call her Kate. And she, she was really struggling. She couldn't believe, she couldn't do all sorts of things. She had a real sense of I, I'm not good enough and I can't do it all. And she was, she had, a, she had young, young children. She was really struggling to fit in any sort of self-care for herself, for her nutrition and exercise, but she really needed that. Her health was really struggling. And her simple statement was, I can. And I share it because it's the most simple out of all the clients I work with. I love it because it's so simple. She just said, I can. Whenever people would, you know, criticize her or or she was struggling with how how do I deal with all this, she would just say, I can't. I can't. And she'd keep saying that. And uh, that was about a year ago and I spoke to her recently and um, a year later she'd still say, I can. And it's still helping her. So what's the statement you can come up with that will help you? And again, if you want to discuss that together, you're very welcome to um, share your, share the statement, your overwhelmed statement. We can work through together what might be a, a great statement to flip that or come sideways to that. I'm smart. I can figure it out. That is lovely. I'm, I can figure it out. Thanks, Ken. That's a great one. Because that's empowering. Can you see that, girls? That's empowering. I can figure it out means... You're trusting that you're actually going to think it through, make the effort, come up with the answer. Yeah, learning new scary stuff is, I can figure it out. Yes. Yeah, I just use the I can with text stuff. I can. <laughs> I have no idea. I can, I can. Someone knows. I just have to know who to ask. Ask Kat. That's a good thing. <laughs> yes, Nicole, are you going to, the ladies that are here, if either of you would like to share what you're, Thinking that's cool. Yeah, thinking that's good. It's not so easy. But if you want to actually chat about it together, we can chat about it. We do have a couple of minutes. I don't know. I'm sitting here thinking, uh, trying to do, think of that, uh, what do you call it, uh, reverse psychology. Absolutely. Yes. Reverse psychology. We love it. I mean, I, I, I'm think I'm trying to think of positive, a positive, uh, you know, oh, yeah. Yeah. Situation, Nic- a part of the situation. You know? Yeah. So Nicole, is the thing that you want to do to say no, or is the thing that you want to do to say yes to yourself? I don't know. Oh, Kat was saying the same yeah. thing. Just, but sometimes I say yes to me. I was like, <laughs> I'm on a wavelength, Kat. Yeah. Yeah, well, I've been okay. saying a lot more yes to myself. But I, I took me and my daughter on a, on a family vacation to Hawaii not too long ago. Nice. And I'm going, well, it's not a vacation, but I'm going to New Mexico in a couple of weeks. Wow. But, you know, just little things. Great. And, and well, anyways, I guess personally, I guess how to positively, positive, sound positive when to say no, you know, how to, yeah. without being negative. Sure. Yeah. It, yeah. There's, yeah. There's people who out there that I say no, mm-hmm. they're just going to think that I'm the bad person mm-hmm. or, and make, trying to make me feel bad. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I'm wondering whether there's a way that you can just say, oh, look, I've got, I have so much on at the moment. I can't do that at the moment or can't score. I give options that work for me. They'll either choose one or find another way. Giving options is yeah, like, yeah. I but, like those. Yeah, no. And that can be, that could be even limiting, like saying, um, you know, they want you to help with whatever, and you can know, well, I can I can help you for an hour on Saturday morning, but apart from that, I'm fully booked already. Something like that. Well, yeah, I practically am in ways. If I'm not working, I'm with the kids, and if I'm not with the kids. I'm in workshops or conferences. <laughs> yeah. yeah, here we are. Yeah, and here's yeah. my little Yeah, and my little one just walked in. Lovely. Hey, little one. Yeah, so I think the challenge is to think about what is what can you do and what can't you do and then be very confident and comfortable with saying no. Be very confident to say, look, I'm fully committed. I would love to help you, but I just am fully committed. I, I do tell people that I, I, I'm, 
I'm very busy. Yeah. I'm just very busy. And I don't give excuse or anything. No. It is, um, I just can't. I it's can't. actually true at this time of your life with your kids, with the, the going down so young. It's actually yeah. true. And this, yeah. this age when they're little, is that goes so quickly. I know. I know. You want to you yeah. cherish the moments while you can be with them because, you know. Right, right. As in work-wise now, I am the admin project assistant office manager, and I get very overwhelmed overwhelmed at work okay and and uh sometimes i get so overwhelmed that i forget what i'm doing or mm. yeah you know i just Absolutely. i get stuck i just it's like where do i get start again yeah where did yeah. i leave off? yeah because the overwhelm you get a fuzzy brain you get the stress builds up in your body what happens with overwhelm is that you get that flight front or freeze response that um, they talk about in psychology. So that will actually freeze your brain and you'll want to run away rather than actually thinking clearly. Um, so yeah, that's, yeah, that's the I, whole thing. So yeah. So if you think about work with the things that we've been doing, <laughs> Stacy. Oh, yeah. So is there a is is there a way that you can actually break down? Because it's office manager, obviously there's lots of things that you're juggling and different people and their needs and their requests and all this sort of thing. But is there a way that you can well, prioritize and work at what's the most important? Well, I this organization is a nonprofit in education. Um, um, it's a it's a native organization. We yeah. learn from our traditional educator. I mean, traditional. Um, um, elders right. and create we're a professional development for our 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 native um yeah, yeah, yeah. community to hopefully become teachers because like eighty five percent of our teachers come to Alaska right. to teach our Alaskan children and and um we create um curriculum traditional okay. curriculum Alaskan right. teachers teaching and and um that's fantastic well, so what is it that makes it overwhelming at work well it's just all over the place i i i gotta run payroll get all the the payroll documents out to the accountant mm-hmm. i got to i, I got it i'm a project assistant trying to get this every everywhere yeah i'm i'm everywhere i'm yeah it's a very small organization. To be yeah. honest with you, there's only three of us. Yeah. And I do three roles. And right now, I've been there seven years and I'm, yeah. <laughs> and I just sometimes I feel like I'm on, on glass sometimes with my supervisor. Oh, that's challenging. And she can't expect me to do everything right because I'm the only one to, there. But I love my job. Yeah. Oh, well, if you love your job, that's fantastic. So I guess the thing to do is to actually be be really clear on what the different chunks are of the job because obviously you're doing so many different pieces, the payroll and your, all the different the courses and all the different things. And then to work out what's what what do you need to get done each week? And is there a way to make it? easier and streamlined like for example payroll you might go every Thursday morning I'm doing payroll and I'm actually gonna you know put my phone on mess you know like answering machine or something for an ear or not answer it and ring back so I can just get that payroll done without getting interrupted because when you get interrupted all the figures are jumbling in your head and then at another time you might say I'm just going to do this bit and it's not that you're unavailable much but you just carve out pieces of time where you do something really complicated or really that you need to concentrate um, I find that really helps. I think that's what I really need to learn how to do is mm. is really set my time blocks. Yeah, because and then them. the project, you know, yeah. our 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 project is funded through the NASA grant and stuff. Yeah, and so I try to get that out the door as fast as I can, and through our board meeting. Yeah, you know, I got to do the board meeting minutes. I got to get that done every two weeks. Yeah. Or in, in, in so, you know, that's coming up. Um, we're going to have to move on in a minute because I'm just oh, getting I'm sorry. Sort of conscious. No, I'm just saying 
you, you know what's coming up. You know, you've got the board meeting every two, me two weeks. So that means you can actually prepare in a couple of days beforehand. You can do the, the minutes, you can do that agenda, you can do that, whatever, because you, it's a predictable you know when it's coming up, don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So well, I try to fun. have the document, like the format already. Great. So, yeah. 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 And then I cheat and there's this one app called Descript. Mm -hmm. So it takes voice transcripts. That is not cheating. That, that is not. I <laughs> know. Yeah. <laughs> Using tech. We've got tech nowadays that we never could have dreamed of. Use it. Great. Yeah. And it gives you two hours of free um, free transcribing. Cool. Voice to, cool? Uh, Huh? Which one's that? Which one's that? Yeah. It's a uh, DE oh, yeah. Descript. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. Cool. Thank you. And I give you two hours of uh, voice to text. Mm -hmm. And That's or fine. you, yeah. And right. so, which was very helpful, but I got to listen to it again. Yeah. At the same time that I'm listening to it, I got to do the minutes in, in another doc. Yeah. You know, when I'm listening to the minutes, I got to put down all the, the tasks for the executive director and me yeah. and the board members. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, it, it's a lot. That's, what, that's what takes so long to do right. the minutes. It takes me yeah. like four days to do it for a two hour meeting. Well, <laughs> sounds like you need, yeah. Sounds like you need some strategies to think how to do it as efficiently as possible. Well, I thought this anyway. will help me, but yeah. Well, hopefully, hopefully by breaking it down into little steps and thing and carving out time where you're not interrupted and so you can concentrate because that yeah. does slow. So hopefully that helps a little bit, Nicole. Yeah. Um, I'd yeah. just like to share my last tip because I know that Kat's going to jump in in a minute. She answered you said I had 45 minutes and it's 43. So I do want to give you a bonus strategy. And this is really a fun one because a few years ago, well, quite a few years ago, I was a uni student and uh, studying. And I was given this book and I had to read this whole book and write an assignment on it. And I started reading this book and I just, I just thought, I cannot even understand this. Like, I, I don't care. I don't want to know. I don't understand it. It's too hard. It's too boring. Um, and I said to my husband, I cannot read this. Like, this is just blah, 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 blah. And he said, why don't you make a cover, sit in your favorite chair and just pretend that you're doing it for fun and see what happens. And I thought, well, I'm kind of desperate. So I just, I'll try it. So I sat in my favorite chair and put my, there was a recliner. I can put my feet up. It's lovely. And I had my cup of tea and a chocolate biscuit. And I sat there and I started reading this book and I actually just read it. I'm like, I'm reading this for fun. And I pr pretended to, it was fun. I pretended I was interested and I got quite interested. And the thing that I had not been able to understand, suddenly I could understand it. It was like, it was amazing. It was like this sort of cloud lifted. And I went, wow, I can do this. So I just, the hot tip, if you're really struggling with something that's complicated is pretend that you're doing it for fun. Pretend that like, oh, I'm going to do this for fun. You could even put on some poppy music if that's not going to stop your brain, you know, focusing on what you're doing. Um, because um, our minds are actually, like I was saying before, we've got these blind spots. We've got these assumptions that we make about life. By actually you telling yourself, hey, I'm going to do this for fun. Um, then you can actually um, trick your brain into knowing how to do it. Trick your brain into doing its best rather than blocking. Um, I uh, I love, um, as I said, I love coaching with mindset and thinking because our thinking is so powerful and our thinking is the thing that really makes the difference between how we see the world and how we could see the world and be more empowering or how we see the world and make it overwhelming. Um, I love uh, exploring that. Um, so let me just see. Yeah, so I think that's where I'd like to leave it. And I think we're right on the 40, I think it might be 44 minutes. Actually, we started a minute late, didn't we, Kat? But it, I was aiming for, aiming for the good pass. Um, so just uh, to reiterate, so write, away, write all the things down. Think of, oh, let me really check my, so number two is what's important. And that might not be what's urgent, but what's really important and what's going to make all the difference. Step three is make a plan and actually strategy, work out your strategies step by step. 
Step four is what belief is making you overwhelmed. Step five is create a belief that actually makes you feel better. Something that makes that makes that that overwhelming belief less powerful for you. And it might not be the opposite. And the bonus strategy is pretend you're doing it for fun. So I hope that's been helpful. And um, over to Kat. I was writing notes. <laughs> Oh, actually, I had one more question, and that is, I'd love it if you put, could put in the, in the chat. Um, was there one thing that really jumped out at you, like something that you just really thought that was, that was really helpful? Sometimes it's good to stop before you leave the webinar like this and actually digest it and think, what was really helpful so you can make sure you remember that thing? So if you can share that in the chat, just the thing that you thought was most helpful, that would be really good for you, good for me. You can't plan and execute at the same time. Yes. Yes. Really, really important to know. I personally really loved that um, if you're struggling with being overwhelmed, take a breath and pretend that you're doing it for fun. <laughs> I love that. Great. Because I know for me that when I get really overwhelmed with stuff, I just want to curl up in my in my bed with my comfy blanket and watch Netflix. Yeah. I yeah. just binge watch stuff because yeah. I just want my brain gets overloaded. So it shuts down. Yes. But if you are having fun with something, you tend to enjoy it more and you tend to engage with it more. So that is to me, just an amazing suggestion. Great. Excellent. Oh, I hope it works for you, Kat. I hope so too. <laughs> right. I'm sure, sure it will. All right. So everyone, thank you so much for joining us today here at TechSoup Connect Australia. And please put some love up for Carolyn for taking the time to meet with us and talk about going from over, overwhelmed to organized and all of the amazing value that you have brought to today. This is because I've, I've actually known Carolyn for, I don't know, a good year or two now. I think we've been in some communities together and I know what she does, but I've never experienced what she does. So this has been a real treat to actually experience firsthand um, and gain a real feeling for what it is that you do. So thank you so much for that. Um, do you have some contact information that you can put up on the screen? Sorry, I, should, I don't mean to put you on yes. the spot there. <laughs> so that if yes, every... I can notice that. Yep. Oh, um, let's see. Um, Perfect. So that's something that's got, so I've got my... Uh, email address connect at myjoyfullife.com.au if you want to get my weekly tips or if you just want to ask a question or you know, have a conversation about what we just did um, my website it's a bit more small at the bottom is myjoyfullife.com.au is my website uh, and that's got all sorts of information and uh, there's a blog there with all sorts of topics that might be yes. to you. excellent thank can you can you drop that? that can you drop that in the chat so we could just copy and paste it great idea thank you I could try. Okay. So if anyone would like to reach out to Carolyn to learn more, please email her at connect at myjoyfullife.com.au or visit her website, myjoyfullife.com.au. So our next presentation is going to be on the 1st of February with Barbara Clifford talking about negotiation and influence. So that should be really interesting about how to gain more support for your organization. And there's a whole bunch of different things with that. So we'd love to see you at the next webinar. So if, uh, do we have any other final questions or thoughts? Feel free to unmute yourself and join the conversation if you don't wanna drop it in the chat. If there's anything else that you have, either a question, a comment um, for Carolyn or myself. Actually, I'm just, while you're thinking about that, I've just dropped the email and the website in the chat, and I might also drop the Facebook group. I've got a Facebook group uh, where I pop in every week and share share hot tips, and I also I have do free challenges four times a year and all sorts of exciting programs. So if you're a woman and you're interested in that, then this is the Facebook group. Perfect. Thank you so much. Okay. Well, everyone, thank you so much for joining us and we look forward to seeing you next time. Have a great rest of your day.